Hey guys, it's your favorite Dynabite here, and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Godzilla vs. Team, it has always been a fight that's been interesting, to say the least here. It's always been a fight that I guess a lot of people actually wanted. However, over the years, getting into Dungeons and Dragons, I do realize I have done Tiamat poorly. Especially in my first video where she was fighting against King Ghidorah, that was just horrible and i definitely will take that back and debunk myself when i get to around wave eight so with that being said here we are going up against idw godzilla okay and before we actually begin here i want to thank every single one of you who voted and yeah i kind of expected godzilla to get the most votes here that's kind of how it is nowadays here and maybe it's just because a lot of people just didn't know team it but again i guess we'll just have to educate them as well but we'll be using the full totality of team it as we'll be using the full totality of idw godzilla basically we'll be using her avatar and her true form while also using everything for idw godzilla okay so with that being said please comment down below like and subscribe and share it with your friends and well we'll be starting off with idw godzilla and i hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay so let's get the basics out of the way right godzilla has always been one of the strongest kaiju in his verse if not the strongest kaiju with a few contenders for that title right godzilla has always been able to overpower monsters like titanosaurus destroyer king Ghidorah, space godzilla monster x so on and so forth even fighting against multiple kaiju at the same time like when he fought batra and rodan back to back here this would give godzilla easily ftl to immeasurable levels of speed considering they're able to cross an infinite distance or able to fight against monsters that are able to cross infinite universes however godzilla has also been able to fight against the gods of his respective verse being able to defeat the gods of olympus yamata norochi the japanese gods and god himself the creator of his cosmology now this is important here because god was confirmed to create everything in the godzilla idw verse not the idw verse in general he didn't create dungeons and dragons he didn't create um ninja turtles he didn't create transformers all right this god is respectively connected only to the godzilla verse he created everything in the IDW Godzilla verse, okay? Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of people tend to say that Godzilla could wipe out or Godzilla in hell could wipe out the entirety of the IDW verse, including Transformers and obviously the verses I named earlier. Not even going to the fact that they've never been connected to each other, like at all here. So with that being said here, how powerful is IDW Godzilla with hell? Now, this is important because all the universes in Godzilla are infinite, with heaven and hell being beyond time and space and existing on a spiritual level. This is important because Godzilla was able to not only defeat God, but surpass him, or supplant him, I mean. And this is important because God has created everything, all right? Even being able to blast the God Demon, which was considered equally equal, or at least somewhat on par with god himself here okay so godzilla literally being able to beat the creator of his cosmology and being able to beat beings that were considered on par with this same exact god all right so obviously he's creation level however it goes further than that right with the godzilla and power rangers crossover now, yes, this crossover is canon to the IDW verse here. And this is important because Rita's magic, when her staff was destroyed, was able to merge both the Godzilla and the Power Rangers cosmology together. Basically morphing, or excuse me, <laughs> that's funny. Basically merging everything about them together. This includes other verses like um, Showa, Heisei, and even GMK Godzilla was in there, and Godzilla 2000 as well, or Millennium Godzilla. And this is important because this means that she also was able to merge the morphing grid. Rita's magic was unable to affect Godzilla, and he casually brushed it off as if it was nothing. With Rita being able to merge the verses together, they're both respective 
cosmologies together, excuse me. This means that Rita was also able to merge the Morphin Grid, which would put her at Outer Versal pretty easily, considering the Morphin Grid is beyond time and space. Godzilla also has a plethora of abilities, like his atomic breath, nuclear pulse, and his overpower regeneration, even being able to regenerate from the Psycho Kaiju Rangers. Basically, the Psycho Rangers combined with Godzilla's greatest enemies like Destroyer, Hidora, King Ghidorah, Gigant, Space Godzilla, and Megalon. Alright, Godzilla was not only able to take attacks from these guys, but also regenerate from them as well. And these monsters also can hit on a subatomic level as some of them scale to the absolute zero cannon, which hits your atoms at a subatomic level, rattles them around, freezes them, and then shatters them. So with Godzilla also being able to take the absolute zero cannon, he would also scale to that. You also have Godzilla in his fusion mode where he's able to draw the energy from Earth itself and then produce the fusion ray and the fusion pulse, which allowed him to cripple and be a monster that was notably strong enough to tank his atomic breath. So with that being said here, I think it's fair to say that IDW Godzilla would be outer with having him faster than light to immeasurable and a plethora of atomic abilities and limited energy absorption. So with that out of the way, let's actually address the Queen of Dragons herself, Tiamat. Now this is going to be an update to an update here, <laughs> because again, Tiamat is absolutely insane. So before we talk about Tiamat, we have to talk about her father dash good brother. I don't know how this really works here. I'm going to call him a daughter, call her a daughter, excuse me, because she is the daughter of Lo or Asgarath, who is the creator of the Dungeons and Dragons cosmology. Now you might say, okay, legendary, why is that important? Does it scale to TMA in any way? Actually, yeah, she would scale relative to not only her father, but her brother as well. Matter of fact, she might be superior to her brother Bahamut. So this is important because Asgraph created a three-layered, infinite-layered cosmology. The outer plane, the material plane, and the ethereal plane. I hope I said that name right. So it's outer, ethereal, and then the material, okay? Or is it the astral plane? I think it's the material plane. Dear Lord, I can't believe I just forgot that quickly. Nope, it's the material plane. My bad, my bad. So the material plane, the ethereal plane, and the outer plane are all three layers to the Dungeons and Dragons multiverse with other layers inside of it. You see, each layer is infinitely layered, meaning that each layer is infinite dimensional, meaning that one layer is already high hyperversal. The other layer, high hyperversal. And then there's the other layer, which is high hyperversal as well, because it deals with the infinite layers to each part of the multiverse i know it's crazy ain't it even the abyss itself which is basically around the entire multiverse itself is infinitely layered and beings in the cosmology can shake it this is important again because she is the daughter or again the sister but it's weird because he gave like birth to her so i'm going to call her the daughter um is the evil daughter of the creator and she is a greater god and you might say legendary. Why is that also important? Now, you see, these titles in the Dungeons and Dragons cosmology are not just titles. These titles are very essential to the character here because it actually states that these characters or these beings in the cosmology like Zeus, Odin, and Amira, characters of these many, I guess you could say, um, these different levels here actually tell how much you can destroy in the cosmology if you're a lower rank you can only destroy like what at best a planet maybe possibly get to a universe maybe you could get to universal if you have some like linear scaling but then there are beings that can destroy everything on a conceptual level down to the layers itself here Tiamat is one of those beings. Now you might say, Legendary, what has she done for herself? What are her feats? Okay, okay, I got you. Now, as you guys saw earlier, Tiamat was actually able to defeat her brother, Bahamut. And she was also able to defeat multiple good dragons that were actually able to challenge her. And she ripped one dragon apart so violently that her blood scattered throughout the entirety of of the multiverse meaning she scattered her blood through three multi infinite layers and and created hydras 
tell me that's not insane here. Now, keep in mind, TMS Haxes also contribute to this here. Not only her elemental abilities, but also her negation abilities as well. But I'll get into that later. I think it's pretty simple. She's out of versal, probably high out of versal as well, with immeasurable speeds here. She's an absolute demon when it comes to battle here. So, with that being said here, um, I think I didn't expect to get through all that pretty quickly in all honesty so i'm a little lost for words here so i guess we could actually head to the not only the battle itself here but um we could actually go into if this match is close or not like uh, in all honesty it's pretty interesting in my opinion because again you have hell godzilla or godzilla and idw in general versus tiamat both avatar and true form here so wow this is actually pretty interesting in my opinion might make an octopus prime match for her later maybe megatron i don't know M maybe she does deserve an alternative matchup so with that being said here um who takes what if these two ever go blow for blow with each other well i do think godzilla should respectively take physical strength i think that is pretty fair for him i'm not saying teammate is a slouch when it comes to physical strength but it's not her go-to she's more haxy Albeit, she will run the ones and run those hands with you, or those hands and heads, uh, when she, you know, when she feels like it. But Godzilla is definitely the more physically dominant of the two. He's overpowered these many, these kaiju frequently, and he's more of a physical fighter than Tiamat. So, I think that physical strength, while you could say it's close here, I definitely, Godzilla takes a slight edge when it comes to it. When it comes to speed here, I'm definitely going to have to give it to Tiamat. She's been able to beat beings and definitely tag beings that could cross the abyss. Like it's nothing. Keep in mind, again, it's an infinite abyss with infinite layers to it. And has been able to fight against beings and even scatter someone's blood across the entirety of the multiverse. I, I don't think y'all get that. She threw someone's blood that fast to the point where it, it just... It went across the entire multiverse. There, there's no if, hand, or buts about it. Now, for the hacks and abilities, and this is where we have to talk about Teammet, right? Teammet has these various spells, these various powers and abilities here. Now, yes, she does have her elements, ice, fire, um, poison, darkness, and lightning, okay? That's all her heads. Each of these heads has all that, right? So, she also possesses negation. She has hacks. She can create force fields. She can affect someone on a molecular or an atomic level. She has, she, she's basically Silver Surfer, but evil. Like, she can do anything she wants to you, whenever she wants to you, and you're just going to have to sit there and take it. And in all honesty, when it comes down to the matchup in general... Godzilla does not have too many hacks resistances. Now, yes, you can definitely give him a lot of resistances, such as molecular resistance, erasure resistance, so on and so forth, because he, again, was able to take the, sorry, take on the creator of his cosmology and wasn't able to be erased from existence, quite obviously, right? However, when it comes down to it, Tiamat outhaxes him so badly. Like, there's so many, there's like a whole list of her hacks, like I can't even get into, plus her regeneration and her immortality as well, so Godzilla might not be able to really kill her, but he may be able to defeat an avatar. Now, you might say, what about his future form? Surely that could do some damage, right? Well, Tiamat can not only weaken the attacks of her opponents, but she can also negate them, meaning it's very possible that Godzilla can get that power boost and for it to just be useless. Which would make it a whole lot worse for the big guy. Meaning he now has to rely on other means to try and take her down. And again, if teammate can just bypass his durability, negate his healing and everything. Again, it doesn't really feel like it's a very fair fight here. If it was just a physical matchup, I think Godzilla could take it here. He may just have to try and keep it that way. But again, Team Mech can fly. She's far faster than he is. And again, she can keep him off with a whole lot of her versatility. In all honesty, when it comes down to it here, I definitely see Team Mech taking it more times than not here. And do I think this fight is close? I do think this fight is fair. But the problem is Team Met just has way too many hacks to where it becomes one-sided at some point. So again, the fight can start off evenly, 
but eventually Tiamat's hacks and abilities are just going to overwhelm Godzilla. So that's all I got to really say here for today, you guys. I definitely think Godzilla loses, but it is definitely close enough to where I can say it's not a one-sided stump. However, it does become a one-sided stump after Team Met really starts like hacks bombing him. So overall, tell me what you guys think down below. I think Team Met does take it pretty badly here in the at the you know at the end of the day here but godzilla's best bet is to keep it close for as long as possible and hopefully pin her but again the amount of hash that she has it probably just won't happen but that's gonna be all today you guys please comment down below like and subscribe and share it to your friends this is legendary grimlock and i hope you guys have a blessed day